What's up, guys? Old Ad Mike here. Welcome to my album review for Limp Biscuits Still Sucks. Let's go. You die. Also, before you ask if you did see anybody else's reviews who may have not actually listened to the album and skipped through some of the songs, yes, I did listen to the whole album. Limp Biscuit is was was a big band for me. Uh, they did influence me a ton growing up. I listened to uh, Chocolate Starfish was my high school anthem, basically. That whole album I listened through way too many times in, like, what, 2001? Very vivid memories of listening to that album, actually. So I did love this band. Uh, you know, $3 Bill, all that stuff was so good back in the day. Uh, they obviously fell off a little bit, got kind of weird. And this is their comeback album, so let's dive into it. <laughs> also, make sure you spin kick that subscribe button. And let me know what you think of my new stream room setup, recording room setup, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit more of me in the video, along with just some nice cool decorations. Everything was a little bit more jumbled uh, previously, so let me know what you think. But anyways, moving on. Okay, so diving into this album. Yes, I'm a little late, but I just didn't have the time. It's Halloween weekend. Did a lot of stuff with my family, trick-or-treating and all that. Anyways, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know, I had heard dad vibes. Everybody heard dad vibes when they when they dropped that and even when they were teasing it, especially because I was supposed to go see them with Spirit Box. Uh, sadly, my part of the tour got cut. Very upsetting. I was super excited about that. But anyways, so again, didn't really know what to expect, but start playing the album and I'm sitting there and first 10 seconds and riffs just start slapping me. I've always known Wes Borland is a very good guitar player. He does some real crazy stuff and uh yeah he still surprised me the riffs are feel very updated they feel relevant it's not just straight 90s 2001 music you know it still has that vibe the whole album still feels like you know 2001 or so but but there's updates required updates that they did to make it still sound new you know, honestly, the guitar work really carries a lot of the album. Fred sounds like Fred. I don't think anybody could replace Fred. Um, you take him out of the equation, it's not really Limp Biscuit, but he does kind of, you know, he, the lyrically and musically, it, it, it sounds like Fred. You know, it's still got that cheesiness, uh, but I guess that's part of the charm. But sonically the guitar work is just really what fucking punches you in this album for the most part uh we'll get there production on this album is immaculate everything sounds crisp clear bass guitar drums fred everything honestly production perfect so making my way through downtown the album and you get to a slow song uh I believe it's don't change i rolled my eyes at first i was like really they're gonna do some slow stuff here, okay. And then I'm listening to it, and I'm like, okay, this is actually pretty pretty good. It's pretty nice. Nice little palate cleanser. I enjoyed it. Uh, I guess I found out later that it's also an NXS cover. So it's not a Limp Biscuit written cover. That's probably why I liked it as a slow song. So I'm solid there. Then I get to a track called You Bring Out the Worst in Me. It starts out a little slow, but boy, does it fucking kick in, man. I'm assuming it's all Fred doing the screams here, but Fred does some screams, and I mean screams. Like, these, this dude sounds like borderline, like, hardcore. Hardcore punk, metalcore screams. It is awesome, and I really hope they come out with some more stuff with that in it, because it really worked, especially with the rest of the album. It was like a nice little, just addition, again, an, an, an update that really helped bring out this album. Um, and yes, they do it multiple times in the album. There's like three tracks with some very solid screams. So continuing through the album, then um, I get to a track called Barnacle. It's very 90s. It's borderline almost Stone Temple Pilots ripoff, but not quite. It's a, it's like an homage to several 
90s bands. Um, you get some a little bit of Nirvana riffing in there a little bit, some Jane's Addiction vocals along with the Stone Temple Pilots vocals and just cadence and also again some some heavy parts in there so uh and it's i don't know it, it to get a little meta here for a second it's like the song's called barnacle stuff stuck to him and he's like uh you know get off of me you know cheesy lyrics but i feel like maybe you know with that mixed in with the 90s vibes that's in it is like the people you know telling him to move on you know and stuff and he's like you know trying to cleanse himself of that. I don't know. Maybe the maybe I'm thinking a little too deep. It's Limp Biscuit of all, but you know, these are still musicians and this is art, so maybe I, I'm just trying to translate it a little bit. Who knows? Moving on, you know, listening through the album and you know, people are like, "Oh, head mic. You know, is there a breakdown in this? You know, why are you covering this? Is there a breakdown?" Uh, you goddamn right there's a breakdown. Fucking bitch. was not expecting a breakdown yes it's still not like super breakdown kind of fake downy riff but it's a breakdown man and uh i had a lot of fun with it i really like this track uh pill popper again a nice just nice addition to the album that really helped kick it up sadly then you get to the end and it's the last track is goodbye i think it's the weakest track on the album uh it's again another slow song with some acoustic guitar and some pop sensibilities and it's just a little too pop especially for a closer um i think they could have like switched it with pill popper let pill popper end and because i believe pill popper is the one that also has like a little skit at the end which is classic limp biscuit i think i think they could have put that one last and it would have kept my score up a little bit higher but they put goodbye on there i make sense because it's titled goodbye well, you know put this last song but it was just too it didn't it didn't make me want to break stuff you know what i mean i, I gotta break stuff when you listen to limp biscuit so i think that brings my score down a little bit top tracks are you bring out the worst to me that was uh, my favorite track on the album uh just maybe it was just because it how su surprised i was with like the hardcore screams in there but uh yes I, that was my favorite track pill popper again breakdown come on why am i not gonna pick that and then dad vibes dad vibes is you know their breakout single from this album and it's catchy as shit man i've only listened to it a few times and that fucking that beat his his flow is stuck in my head you got to put that up there too so um overall very solid album i mean it's some of the best stuff they've put out um in a while uh, i like that it sounds very limp biscuit it's dude, goddamn for sure it's limp biscuit you know especially with fred in there it sounds super 2001 limp biscuit but they keep it fresh they've updated things and it just really helps to move it on and keep it relevant while throwing back still to nostalgia. Uh, so I really enjoyed this album. I would recommend it, especially to any Limp Biscuit fans. If you ever liked a Limp Biscuit song in your life, check out this album. If not, um, jump into it with uh, You Bring Out the Worst of Me. Check that out. Maybe Pill Popper as well. Those are going to be the high points of the album, so it's not going to get much better than that. But uh, maybe that could get you into it, I think, maybe. So rating-wise, I would probably... I would give this... I would give this an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Just about a B plus, A minus. If they would have switched that goodbye last track with something else maybe even cut it out if they cut it out it would have been this album would have been like 29 minutes but it's limp biscuit you know um i appreciate them showing you know mainstream this is their mainstream band they show mainstream that you can be heavy while being fun and just really not fucking caring because that's what limp biscuit is and will always remain as they just you know it's they don't give a shit and it's self-aware that's that's really what this album shows is that they are aware you know of how corny and cheesy they can be but they don't fucking care you know um and that's cool or at least maybe it is just to me as an old man i don't know uh but yeah eight out of ten would it be in my top albums of the year probably not maybe top 10 maybe top 15 uh def probably not top five but uh you know stay tuned for that video that's a that's a whole nother topic but uh again 
spin kick that subscribe button let me know what you think of my new setup and also let me know what you think of this album i appreciate you guys watching and keeping up with me through um through the channel growing i appreciate you guys hope to see you uh on our friday night live streams that we do here on youtube 7 p.m central standard time old head mike signing off reminding you never too old for this